Ronald, you have a very strong background in the financial sector, asset management, deposit trading. As far as I understood, can you tell us something about your experiences? For how long did you work there? Well, my experiences are more complicated than what you mentioned just now. Actually, I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. Independence being the key component to me. I have once tried being an employee, but that didn't work out. Being an entrepreneur, I have seen many sectors, amongst which I have experienced the financial world. All my other companies as an entrepreneur, like my own fashion line for ladies, car dealership and also import-export, had me involved to such an extent with building up my own fortune, it inherently guided me into the world of finance. Working in import-export, you encounter different currencies and you have to go to the exchange to trade through brokers. And one of the brokers said at some point, Ronald, I've been looking at your life for a long time and you are always busy. You earn money, we know, but what is your goal? And I replied, the only goal I have as an entrepreneur is to earn as much money as I possibly can. Because, the more money I have, the quicker I can retire, be free and of course have status. Basically everything you want in this society or at least, that's what I thought back then. So the broker said, in that case, stop what you are doing now, stop with all those companies and just start dealing money, go into the financial world. And that is the beginning of that situation that is connected to your original question. The broker had a place in the exchange market and he dealt in currencies, deposits, so trading in assets to make money out of differences in interest rates and that involved the aforementioned asset management. Those three aspects together formed the interested package I said yes to. He said, all right, you can take my place here, I'll train you introduce you into the network, but in exchange I want 10% of your annual earnings. So he basically sold me his spot in the financial world and asked a 10% commission which I paid him. I said, yes, fine with me. Then he replied, there is one thing you need to know, if you can't put your conscience in the proverbial freezer, and I don't mean on minus 18 degrees, but on minus 100 degrees, then don't get involved in this. That was the message, you want a lot of money, you can obtain that, I can help you, but it comes at a great cost. Because you cannot do this with a clear conscience. Well, I laughed at that, I was young and naive. From my youth, from the way I came into life, my far from ideal youth led me to develop a certain view of the world and humanity. What do you mean by that? No warm, loving family? My mother always did the best she could to make us feel loved. But she was hampered by that due to the behavior of my father, who caused us to feel more like we lived in a war zone with each other. That isn't an exemplary situation to grow up in. And as a child growing up like that, led me to believe that the world and humanity are far from great. So putting your conscience in the freezer was fitting in as a starting point? I was partially already used to doing that out of self-preservation. So to put my conscience in the freezer was not an impossible task to me. So it became a survival mechanism, do you? Yes, yes. And my view of humanity and the world around me wasn't exactly positive either. I only thought of myself, that the way I grew up to be out of self-preservation and I got into that deal. 
which meant that slowly I build up a customer base. And as I improved my skills within the network, I got deeper into the financial world. And then it turns out the world is really small and you keep noticing that. Even when I was still working in import-export dealing in grain and such, you notice it is just a small circle. And if we talk about the hardcore circle in the financial world, I don't mean Miss Jean at the bank but the big global flows of money which you use for trading. You are talking about worldwide cash flows, so not the Netherlands in particular where you started working? The Netherlands do play a distinct part in this story but the world does not revolve around it. The Netherlands are a part of a large global financial system in which you work through exchange mark if you want to do official transactions. And many banks, who do the currency exchange, get certain assignments from clients, which they can't get away with easily. Then the need arises for people like me, who were the straw men where big money flows are involved. We used certain financial constructions, international legislation, to move money in such a way making everything okay. So all supervisors, regulatory bodies that are in place worldwide, because they are that no one wakes up seeing what is going on, like a year or two ago, with the scandal around Panama. The Panama Papers? Yes. Tax evasion. I think, well that was about avoiding taxes, tax evasion is when you break all the rules. This had to do with avoiding. But when you see what happened there, I'm like guys that is old news. And who are you bring with that because it is peanuts and hardly relevant. However, for the common people, that is great news, but it is not anything big, but it does show, there is something very wrong in this world. For example, there are people in the Netherlands, with certain positions, who have bank accounts in Panama, with legislation that allows them not to pay taxes in the Netherlands, which is completely legal. Constructions like that were part of my job. When we had to change currency, we had changes, the first boycotts in Iraq in the early 90s, when there was a boycott in Iraq because of the war that started there. And we were confronted with what we called Iraqi dollar. Iraqi dollars, which were actually American dollars. The American dollar has a direct relation to the oil prices which made it a world trading currency backed up by oil. As long as that connection is in place, the dollar has a value. Officially, the Iraqi people weren't allowed to sell their oil due to the boycott. In theory that is, because never before there was such a big business in oil. With discounts in this case, because officially it wasn't allowed, so with discounts it still crossed the borders. These dollars, because the energy was always paid in the dollars, so the Iraqi dollars had to go somewhere. You couldn't just take them to the desk at the bank because of all the regulations and checks did provide a certain protection. Because money laundering and criminality wasn't anything new back then, now we call it terrorism. But that was then also the case. So, then you need people to take the heath. As straw men, you got invited to a bank, for example, in Germany's, with basements full of trucks filled with money. And then you think, sure. 
Truck, transports, a busy company. Come with me, then they show you they are all filled to maximum capacity with dollars. And they tell you we need to get rid of all this cash. So change them pounds, German marks, this, that, in such way and it needs to go there and there. Are we now talking about money laundering? Well, processing cash. Processing cash in such a way that we can legally reintroduce it into the money circuit. So that was your task? That was an assignment my colleagues and I got. You are never alone on an assignment, because you cannot do this on your own. It is not possible. We all know Scrooge McDuck scooping money with his shovel, well we literally had to do that over there. It was impossible to process all at once. So, then you need to find a way. Cash used to be the predominant way of paying, where nowadays most is digital. But you tried to find a way to process the cash. How do you reintroduce the cash into the circuit so Iraq can deal in its soil without being hampered? Because they are the ones that own the money. Iraq doesn't want. Look, you mentioned money laundering, but what it was about the boycott, Iraq had to stick to the rules, and buy, you know, everything you want to know about the world. You can know by following the money. That is the bottom line. Everyone can say blah, 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 but make sure you follow the money, then you'll find the truth. Same thing goes for that situation. So the only thing Iraq and their buying partners wanted, was to remain free of any accusations. Because the partners who bought it were the ones placing the boycott in the first place but they are actually all friends on the same side. Everybody thinks there are opposites like good and bad guys in the world. But on the higher levels, it is just a game and they are all working together. However, they do have to stick to the rules and regulations, they themselves have created to keep the rest of society suppressed and make sure that it will not be too crowded at the top. So you have to play by your own rules. So what is going on there, is to make sure that nobody can trace you, apart from the elite themselves. Nobody in lower ranks can find out what really happened. Compartmentalized, that's how we call it. Yes. Everyone knows only his own little piece. Only the elite knows what is happening. Yes, but because we were doing the dirty work, we had to know a lot because we couldn't afford to make any mistakes. How high in the pyramid did you get? Were you close to the top of the pyramid? Well, we were communicating with them. My ego would have loved it when I got to this position of belonging to the top itself. Nowadays we still talk about 8,000 to 8,500 people in the world who run the entire world. It would have been amazing to get into such a position back then. All right, but if we say the top knows 100%, can you estimate how much you knew and understood of what happened? In my work, I had to know 100% of what was going on. There was no other way, because of the interests of the people involved were huge. Especially for the top. If I wouldn't know all the details, I would end up making mistakes which would cause a spin-off, because those mistakes would be detected. Then the people that don't know anything about it would interfere. We are talking about having nerves of steel to function at this level. So did you have nerves of steel? Yes, it worked just fine. The freezer worked very well for you. Yes, I played at the highest level for about five years. And then it was totally over, out and done with. That was a very intense moment for me. That happened suddenly? Well, no the thing is, I gave a small example of what was involved. 
So, in this case, currency exchange, dollar to something else, deposited in a safe manner, and managing assets well, so it could grow to rate of return, leading to reinvestments with the money. The level I played it in those five years, and that didn't happen overnight, you need to earn your place. I am skilled at connecting the dots, information in order to achieve a full picture of all the things involved. That need to be taken into account within the playing field. Which is a very detailed process. You stand out when you are gifted in this. This is the reason I was trusted with the full 100% of the information where it concerned my jobs. So, I didn't know about everything they knew, but everything that I needed to know regarding the case I was working with colleagues, I was often put in the leading role, because I kept a good overview of the situation. You're good at making quick switches. Yes, and I was good at innovative thinking to solve the problem. I had fun, creating solutions in such a way to always stay ahead and outsmart them. Staying within the rules of the game but playing around with them to make everything match up. I love that game. However, on the other hand you had a great amount of responsibility and you learned more and more about the real world. Since through the financial world you learn all of the actual truth. So you say all, in what regard? Well your clients give you glimpses of how the world really works. In hindsight, I still didn't know everything. But I did know a lot, because my clients were banks who didn't want blood on their hands, but within those banks there always is a number of people who know damn well what is going on. So, like 1% within a bank knows the truth of the matter regarding the happenings within the world, which is not surprising, considering they are involved in the flows of money. Those are your clients. You also have governments to deal with, multinationals, you have to deal with secret services, and what they now call terrorist organizations. You get all of the groups that are involved with the big money as clients. Then you start seeing the connections, so, they might be compartmentalized as you just mentioned, regarding knowledge. But because I am in the middle I see how they relate to another. You see the money coming from this place then going to that place, etc. You keep gaining information and thereby, an overview of what is really going on. So do you have to serve and keep all of those groups happy, including terrorist organizations? You were trying to keep everybody happy? Yes. My God. That was my job. Keeping all the balls in the air. Yes, indeed. So one of the things that I found out, I did not know that before, but now am I do, is about secret services. You think they are there to serve and protect a people, country, etc. But they actually turn out to be the criminal organizations, to be more precise. The system is heavily so. We are talking about financing wars, creating wars, so basically creating a lot of misery in this world. So, lots of conflict. And then I think to myself, if only people knew what the world is really like, secret services will stop at nothing. Nothing. But they also have their flows of money, because if they are trading in drugs or weapons or, for that matter, people, all that money has to go somewhere. Everything has to be financed. You say if, but you could confirm they are doing this? All of them? All of them? So the entire world as we think we know it, is just an illusion we believe in which is something you find out in this line of work and where it all went wrong for me, to put it that way. Right. You mean, finally that is? In hindsight, yes it was for the best but, my freezer started to malfunction. 
there were things happening. For example I went to a different trade market and one of my colleagues there said, Ronald, you remember that case with the Italian lira? I sometimes mention that during talks as well. Do you remember those deals, in which we did massive dumping of the lira, which reduced the value of the currency? which caused a company in Italy to be hit in such a way, they went bankrupt. And then you hear at the exchange, you remember that successful deal with the lira? Yes. And then they say, did you know that the owner committed suicide and left a family behind? Things like that. And back then we laughed at it. Altogether, all of us. We looked down on people, mocked them, it was just a product, waste, everything was worthless trash, nature, the planet, everything could burn and break. Just useless parasites. Just as long as we met our goals, as long as we were growing, many of my colleagues ended up drinking or using drugs. Not me, maybe I should have. Or not. No, in hindsight, it was for the best and I'm happy to still be alive. However, all those horrible things started to eat at me. Can you give an example, because I can sense a lot of terrible things happen to you? Yes, it is difficult for me to talk about. I can feel that, but only whatever you wish to share is alright. Yes, I only talk about things I want to tell, but it does evoke lots of emotions and with my conscience not being in the freezer, it touches me deeply. Yes, I feel the same way. All right. Can you tell me the worst thing that has happened that caused the tipping point in your situation? Well that was the beginning of the end, you get so deep into these circles. And you sign a lifetime contract, not with blood or anything, to never disclose names of companies, organizations or people. I think that is why I am still alive, you have to stick to it. If we are talking about the worst things that I have experienced, I just told you about things that made the freezer glitch, my conscience started to show itself. Let's put it this way, I was training to become a psychopath and I failed, I did not complete the training and didn't become a psychopath, my conscience came back and the most difficult part for me was, because I had such a great status there, I was a success, I was trusted with the people playing at this level. Mensen in deze wereld die dus op dat niveau speelden. Um, ik moet ook zeggen dat to put it carefully, most of these people followed not very mainstream religion. So, you have Catholics, Protestants, all sorts of religions. These people, most of them, were Luciferians. And then you can say, religion is a fairy tale, God doesn't exist. None of that is real, well, for these people, it is truth and reality, and they served something immaterial, what they called Lucifer. And I also was in contact with those circles, only I laughed at it because to me they were just clients. So, I went to places called churches of Satan. So now we are talking about Satanism. Yes. So, I visited these churches, just as a visitor, dropped by, and then they were doing their holy mass with naked woman and liquor and stuff. And it just amused me. I didn't believe in any of this stuff, and was far from convinced if any of this was real. It was just a spectacle to you. Yes. In my opinion, the darkness and evil is within the people themselves. I didn't make the connection yet. So I was a guest in those circles and it amused me greatly to see all those named women and the other things. It was the good life. But then at some point, I was invited, which is why I'm telling you all this, to participate in sacrifices abroad.
Dat was het breekpunt. That was the breaking point. Kinder. Children. You were asked to do that? Yes. And I couldn't do that. Would you like to stop for a moment by the way? No. And then I started to slowly break down. I lived through quite a lot as a child myself and this really touched me deeply. Everything changed. But that is the world I found myself in. And then I started to refuse assignments within my job. I could no longer do it. Which made me a threat. I was no longer capable of functioning optimally. My performance started to shake and I had refused tasks. I had not participated. The purpose of the whole thing, eventually, in that world, is that they have everybody in their pocket. You need to be susceptible to blackmail. And blackmailing me proved to be very hard if I look back on it. They wanted to do that through those children. And that broke me. Is that, you are not telling me something new, what they also do in politics? If you Google this, you'll find enough worldwide witness accounts to know this isn't a Walt Disney fairy tale. Unfortunately, the truth is, that worldwide they have been doing this for thousands of years. I once studied theology and even in the Bible you find references to these practices with Israelites. The reason the first ten tribes were banished to Babylonia was because of these rituals with children, including the sacrificing of children, so this is pertinent, all this made me believe, because I realized there was more to life than meets the eye, there is a whole invisible world, it is real, you really do talk about a dark force and a manifestation of light. So, I resorted to studying theology to make sense of it all. And psychology as well if I remember correctly? Yes, but that I did in my first life, because through commercial psychology, mass psychology, I was able to manipulate situations for my own benefit. That is scary, because if you dig into that you find Tavistock Institute and Mind Control, MKUltra, Monarch and the like. Yes, that is correct but that was all part of the job. Through training at the job, I got into that more deeply, because when you are making deals, you also need to manipulate the media. You have to manipulate lots of things because nothing can be seen as it is. Everything has to appear to be something different. You see the people as a flock of sheep. You put a couple of border collies and drive them in a direction. And to be honest with you, I still see that happening around me. People are still, through the systems and methods that we ourselves use to use, being treated in that same way and it still works. People still don't understand how it really works and are still on the level of as long as I have my beer and whatever, completely self-absorbed, also a survival mechanism, I mean it is the program after all. But you still see how stupidly easy it is to put people in a certain direction, when you are the one pulling the strings that is... Mass psychology. Yes, and later, much later, in all those studies and discoveries, I found a document which they are claiming is bullshit of course, the Protocols of Zion. And nowadays I recommend everyone to read the whole of that incredibly boring document, just work through it, read it though. We are also talking about Zionism. Yes, of course. If you read the Protocols of Zion, and really study them and understand, then it is like reading the newspaper of the daily life. How from their position of ultimate power, and ultimate it has literally become. 
But that is only because the people don't stand up for themselves. They don't realize what reality is. And we have all been programmed. If you dare to say you are against Zionism, then you are branded an anti-Semite. The negative, you can say evil, the Luciferians, the Satanists, whatever you wish to call it, it is a real entity. I have found that what is written in the Bible, and not just the Bible, you can find it in so many books. There really has been a moment of separation from the manifestation of light, in which a group went their own way and are carrying an intense hatred, anger. The people who do not underestimate the severity of this are but few. Because this is an all-annihilating force that hates our guts, it hates creation, it hates life, and it will do anything to destroy us completely. And the way to do that is to divide humanity. Divide and conquer is their truth. Humanity is a manifestation of light, that is the true creation. As long as you divide them based on political parties, skin color, you name it, then you, from a Luciferian point of view that is, suppress the full capacities of your enemy, their full power. They can't stand up for themselves. Because if that would happen, the Luciferians would lose. Then this monster, the greedy monster would disappear. I tell people about this old American general who puts an entire room of people in the dark. The eyes adapt to the darkness, but you can't see a thing. The general doesn't say a word and suddenly he flicks on a lighter, one little light. And due to the prolonged darkness, you experience a manifestation of light from a single point and everyone can slightly see each other again. And then he says, that is the power of our light. Beautiful. Unite. Unite. Come together. And this entire shit story ceases to exist. That's how fast it could happen. But that is easy for me to say now. But then I was in a period of my life in which I was crumbling down. Could you tell us something specific about that? How did that happen? Because you were invited. I started to refuse assignments. My conscience came back after the request involving the children and I started to refuse more and more. I had a conscience and I couldn't function anymore. But you did still show up at work after that? I didn't really have a choice. I had my own business with several offices and employees. Everything was still rolling. It must have been hard. Yes, it got very hard, all the tensions. So, on the one hand you are playing with money on a high level, in which you can't afford to make mistakes. Otherwise everything falls down at once. Your entire business is ruined, everybody involved, including yourself. Then you are really screwed. So that brings a lot of stress, factoring in the resurfacing of a conscience. I was warned off when I got into this, don't do it if you can't put your conscience at minus 100 degrees in the freezer. And you probably realized that then? Yes, I heard myself laugh at it back then, but it wasn't a joke at all. I totally did not understand where I really got into. And your proverbial freezer was switched off? Broken. I couldn't do it anymore. So, I tried to work through it, keep up appearances. I didn't know how to get out of this. I was trapped as well. Everybody was trapped. This all led me to crash completely eventually. My body just simply stopped. The first thing I saw was my mother crying at the intensive care. You ended up at the IC? Yeah, I really shut down. You had literally crashed? Yes, yes. At that time I didn't believe in anything, not I can still recall how I saw, 
from that corner, I was looking down upon myself, I saw how they were working on me. You had a near-death experience. Well you could call it that. I have seen I am not my body. I'm in my body. But I am not just my body. I have seen them working on me. And later on, I've been reluctant to talk about it for a long time. I really talked about it much later. But when I did, I had researched so many things already and started to believe. I was starting to better understand the spiritual and the material. At that point, this intense experience got its own place. The realization that I'm not my body. It's just a vessel. So, I lived through all of that, but I also needed a long time to recover. Yes, of course. Yes, I was a train wreck. Complete wreck. I was completely burned out. I had crashed and the body needed a year to recover. Because, I don't really want to get into it now but in those circles, I got tortured physically during my exit time. This was in order to make sure I would never break the contract of secrecy. So, I was taken for a certain amount of time, I was treated. All those factors together, just increased the stress I was experiencing. Literally running full speed towards my own end. Do you mean abductions, as well call it, or programming? No, they exposed me to certain types of torture. That makes sure you'll never damage anyone in that world. I didn't realize that back then, so this is all from hindsight. It did all happen that way. So the end of my first life was so extreme that I couldn't handle it anymore. I couldn't handle it anymore, in no way. However, my mind power was so strong, that it only happened with and to my own body. That was, well, I didn't know what to do anymore. There were no options left for me. So that is why sometimes I think, of course that is not true, but I wish, like so many colleagues, I had taken the drugs and alcohol route, at least my end would have been more gentle, because most of them are just dead by now. Even though I know there are more strawmen walking around, there are little still alive whom I knew back then. Most of them are already gone. Well I was dead too, but I'm still here. So, you still have something left to do? Yes, I suppose you could say that, but that is, I can't say in short, since, I don't know how long we have been talking, the world that I found myself in, if you have any specific questions, then I can answer them, but I had hoped to be more concise, but I just don't know how. Well, you have my gratitude for all you have shared. To me, it is still a very big deal.